You start at the beginning. I was working from home and we heard a really loud conversation or talking and I was like, what the heck's going on? And because I'm a busybody, I, I went outside because my neighbors on the one side, I really like them. And so we chat. And so I thought it was maybe them. And I went outside and as I'm walking out onto my driveway, I see nothing. And then because I, I can't not putter, I start pulling up dead plants from my planters outside thinking I'll just throw them in the compost. And then all of a sudden there's this police officer holding a shotgun going, psst, uh, what you doing? And I was like, oh, and this is what I learned about me. In an emergency, I turn into a cartoon cat burglar because I immediately started walking like this. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> Hands up like, in front of you, tippy well, just, I was like, but like a raccoon, like a little raccoon walking around. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I live here. And he was like, okay, come here. And so we were hiding in between houses. And then I could hear the, the speaker was trying to talk to somebody down the, the street in their house. And he had his gun out. And I was like, what the hell is happening? And so he walked me back to my house and he was like, just hang out inside. Everything's fine. He was really, really nice. Um, and then, yeah, this went on for like two hours where we, we opened all the windows just to hear what the hell was going on. But there was... Sorry, so did he at some point after invading your sort of <laughs> privacy on your driveway tell you why he had asked you to come over to talk to him? And no. And tell you what was happening? He didn't no. say, there's an active shooter situation. We need you to go back into your house. Did not say that. He just said, I'm going to need you to go inside and shelter in place. And I was like, okay. And it never even occurred to me to ask. Because John was like, why didn't you say? He goes, what are you doing? Like... I fucking live here. I'm living my fucking life. Did you tell me that there's something going on? Why would well, I not be out in my yard? God, I was looking online for like, am I supposed to know this? And then I was talking to one of the guys I work with today because I was like, man, I am exhausted. I got nothing done yesterday because as soon as that happened, I was like, well, I'm not working anymore because I clearly have to sit and look out the window for the next four hours. And he was like, oh, yeah, I heard about that. And I was like, how the hell did you hear about it? I lived on the street and heard nothing. So anyway, it, it, it ended peacefully. I tried to find stuff about it when you told me, and there was, there was nothing I could find. Well, I was kind of hoping that you would find something to be like, this is like, you could be like my 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 voice on the outside. Because we were like, it's a good thing we don't have anything to do. But the most upsetting part, Ben, was to skip the dishes. John ordered McDonald's and I was waiting for a coffee. And they wouldn't let him come in? No, the police like wouldn't let him stop. And we're like flagging him past. And John was up against the window like, my chicken nuggets. Did you get a refund at least? Like, Fuck. Yeah, I did. But at one point, like we could see out our back window, the car parked down the street and we could see the driver trying to like look for a way to get us the food. And John was like, I'm going to go in the backyard and see if I can hop the fence. And I was like, okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody needs coffee and nuggets that bad. Yeah, I might need coffee and nuggets that bad. I'd, <laughs> I'd hop a fence while there's a bunch of trigger happy cops running around the neighborhood. You know, it, I would, I just, if anything, I felt really bad for the person because, you know, that's a very public bad day. So wait, did you say exactly what happened to this person? Did you find out? Do you know no. anything about this? Nothing. Well, then you don't have to feel that bad for this person because you don't know who they are. You don't know which, like, you know, who lives in that place or even which house it was specifically. So no, no idea. MBD. MBD. Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope that it was just for like a misunderstanding and everything is, is cool. But yeah, like I have no idea who it was, where it was, because I couldn't see down the street and I couldn't like, I don't know. But at least, uh, you know what I will say? The police officers were very nice. Well, yeah. They came and told us afterwards that we were allowed to leave our house. I Even then, I never thought to be like, and what happened? I was just like, thank you. Bye bye. Like, fuck. Well, I guess it's nice when the police are nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just have a, a like my experience around. I know. Is, is uh, um, I generally don't feel at ease when I see them. It's. Uh, did I ever tell you about the time that I worked with this guy at Community and he had a whole bunch of like Pokemon tattoos oh. and a police officer, they were, they were, they had an open container. This is back when they were like 18 or 19 and a, a police officer came up to them in a park and was, you know, giving them the business. And then as they were like, oh, okay, we'll leave, whatever. The, the cop was like, are those gang chats? 
and made him roll up his sleeve and he was like no these are pokemon tattoos but the police officer had never heard of pokemon before and was convinced that they were gang signs and he was like no this is raichu Hey, want to know a fun thing that a police officer can't do is uh, make you disrobe uh, in public or roll up your sleeves and shit. I'm very, uh, I'm very, very uh, defund uh, anti, anti the current iteration of law enforcement that we have. And so I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, I have a hard time participating in, in the, the, well, he was a very friendly police officer. I was like, that's because yeah. you're white and you live in a white neighborhood and he you know i will no i will say my street is not very white i mean you're in calgary oh oh yeah like let's be clear here we're still in calgary (laughs) (laughs) sorry i didn't mean to derail your fun story about police uh police act i guess it would be like their um what is that like dave Chappelle back from like the late 90s early 2000s telling stories about his white friends interacting with the police and then they just end like the conversation ended and we walked away and that's the end of the story. And for some people, that's like a really crazy experience. I do recognize that, especially based on what we see on the news, the fact that a police officer was like polite to me and like walked me back to my house. And I bet some people were like, that must be nice. So, um, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to derail <laughs> us into an excitement of, uh, police culture but you know why shouldn't we talk about it uh generally i feel like they're not the best uh, choice to respond to most situations they're sent to and i think that's borne out by statistics yeah i think like if there's so many times where to de-escalate a situation you need mental health not a gun yeah that would be helpful you know i i can't imagine why a gun wouldn't help de-escalate a situation i was terrified i was like what is that because <laughs> like i we don't Right, so you didn't ask what was happening, but you did ask what the gun-shaped object he was holding. I couldn't not look at it. I was like, holy crap. I've seen those on the TV. <laughs> like, we don't have anybody in our life that's like... A, like, when John was growing up in um, a smaller town, everybody... Because they're all mm-hmm. hunters, right? And his sister's a big hunter and sends us pictures of, like, she... I think I might have mentioned before, like, she won a, one of the lotteries to hunt moose one year. And she sent us a picture of a moose she took down. And I was just like, well, I'm never going to sleep again because that's going to haunt me in my dreams. But I've never, like, I've never held a gun. I've never shot a gun. And I got to say, don't really have a desire to. I built some animals on a farm when I worked on a farm when I was like 14, 15. And uh, I'll never not be able to see that when I close my eyes. Yeah, that's that's the thing there. I just, I'm about. Got to be interesting and funny. It was not. Yeah. I'm one bad day away from going back to being a vegetarian. I just, I struggle. Oh, I thought that was going to be a different way. I was like, well, one bad day away from getting a gun. It's like, whoa, whoa, settle down. No, I, they scare me. And I know, like, I know it's a divisive, a divisive topic, but yeah, guns just scare the crap out of me. I feel like it's a divisive topic for people who don't know how to read statistical analysis of gun violence, but yeah anybody else who can look at a graph uh it's pretty straightforward <laughs> am i being too mean to people who like guns you know fuck, fuck, fuck there's place for guns i mean there's clearly places for for guns like i don't know wait help me come up with a gun hunting i guess in some situations hunting yeah, yeah. but even like i'm kind of I don't think everybody should hunt. No. I'm one of those people. Like, definitely not. I think it depends on the year. I think it depends on like the number of animals that are like, if someone goes out there and counts all the deer and then they're like, yeah, we could hunt this year. Then I'm, I'm, I feel like it's okay. I think it depends on uh, whether or not that's part of your uh, yes. sort of existence your culture, and, and yeah. cultural substance, uh, whether or not you should be hunting and, uh, Yeah, I mean, I get, I've heard arguments from certain people that it means that you are more aware of, uh, you know, where your food's coming from. And I appreciate that. Um, Yeah. You know, factory farming is a, is a garbage bin of its own. Oh, yeah. um, That needs to be addressed and, and meat consumption clearly needs to be addressed. Um, But yeah, guns in general, it's just like, you know, why, what you, what you need that for? 
You want to really feel like a man? Go out there and fucking punch that bear till it's dead. <laughs> Rassle it. If you can take a bear, if you can take that bear down with your fists, then I salute you. You you deserved you deserved to take it out. Okay, that, that's the true Canadian way. Use your yeah, hands and your of, words. A lot, 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 lot of us out there fighting bears. Bear fisted. Putting on our flannel, chopping down trees, punching bears. As you've certainly guessed by now, this is Dork Matters. <laughs> still buying books fuck yeah no i'm not still buying books sorry uh yeah i'm getting text messages from from my partner um or my wife no god Ugh. no don't do that <laughs> yeah i know uh sorry about that this is dork matters uh welcome to the show it's the uh oh holy fuck i know i'm bad at doing this part so i don't know why i'm still the one that does it no just lean into it i love it uh, this is Dork Matters, the podcast for and by dorks about everything that matters to dorks. We're yeah. trying out a couple different things. Um, what else could it be? It could be... Um, Can we find a way to talk about Dorcas McGorkus? Welcome go, to go. Dorcas McGorkus. Uh, Forkus, you're more... I don't know. Forkus. That's a weird thing. Yeah. That, this is the worst intro ever. Okay. Let's try this again. How, what the fuck do we say after the theme song? Welcome to Dork Matters. This is Dork Matters. This is Dork Matters. This is the podcast by dorks for dorks about everything that matters to dorks yeah. uh you're listening to a couple of friends dorking about dork stuff and uh, we want you to join us in this dork sesh yeah we want to hear what dork matters most to you what dork issues oh god this is yeah Oof. yeah it's not just me no this it's like a it's like a bad bad mojo um Oof. Studio, studio. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain street, street, street. Is this like an, what an ASMR thing now? Is that what it's called? It could be. Somebody just looped that first uh, three minutes of our <laughs> awful, awful introduction. Ooh, it's like a bad studio, studio. Bad mojo. Uh, if you're still listening, this is Dork Matters, and tonight we are talking indie games. Beep, beep, beep. I don't know. Uh, is that what you do? Yeah. Pew, it's a Venezuela. Oh, no, now we're yeah. Texas. We got guns. Three up the circle. Hey, that's something guns are good for, is uh, letting everyone know you're excited about the podcast that you're Yeah, you're with. celebrating great audio culture by shooting your gun in the air. Please don't do that. <laughs> um you don't know where those bullets are going when they come down that's what i always think about like that's just going in someone's head like that's just a big arc you don't know so there's something about physics where like the weight of the bullet as it comes down without the accelerant can't break a certain speed because of its weight and wind resistance so maybe it's less dangerous as it comes down but i don't know it can't be yeah, it can't be the same velocity as when it's propelled violently via explosion out of a barrel, right? So, if there's any math dorks out there, physics, physics and math dorks, please let us know. I mean, physics uses the math I've heard. I've never experienced it myself, but I've been told physics requires mathematics. There's that education system. Okay, no, indie dork games. Uh, who are you? What's what's your name? Yeah. My name, oh shit yeah welcome uh i am your dad dork host uh ben rankle and with me as always my partner in stumbling through our introduction it's lexi your indie darling hunt huh adding the last name on again doing it yeah i like it i think i think we need last names we either yeah. both need to have last names or we need to not um let's go with the last name fills it out a graphic designer uh in me doesn't like it when things aren't balanced. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. So um, we. Let's... How many games did you wind up with? 
I started making a list of like my best, my favorite indie games, and I ended up with uh, a lot. And then I started thinking about certain games that I enjoyed and realized they were indie games. Mm -hmm. Um, So what is an indie game? (laughs) This was a question I was asking myself when I was trying to come up with this list. I was like, okay, so what makes this an indie game? Uh, I guess basically independently uh, developed or developed by a small studio without large, uh, you know, financial backing um, from a big studio or a big publisher. Um, and so I found out like, once I started like looking at that criteria, that there were, there were more games than I realized oh, yeah. that I had been playing and, and very much enjoyed that were indie developments. I would honestly say both of the games I play. Mm-hmm. I started with like two, even John was like, how many indie games do you wind up actually playing? And as I started looking at the list, I was like, holy crap, actually a lot, like way more than I thought. So how many did you end up with your with on your list here? I have 11 on my list with two from John. So I guess 13. Yeah, I've got like 12 and then one from Fiona. And then I've got some some popular mm-hmm. ones that I know about that were, you know, unplayed by myself. And then uh, I've got a list of most anticipated. So Ooh. we got a lot, a lot to get through. So what we wanted to do, I guess, when we were talking about this was do our like top top three favorites ourselves. So yeah. I guess let's start and see where what we've got left for after that. What time we have left? But are we gonna are we gonna address the monster in the corner? Like everybody's gonna say Stardew Valley. Like I feel like that's just it's a given. It's on your list. It's on my list. We've already done a whole episode about it. Even though it would be on my list as one of the top three, I didn't include it. Yeah, I still put it on my list. I know that we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because we did an entire episode. It is our most loved episode. Go listen to it. Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, we get into it. I could do another episode on Stardew Valley. We didn't even get into any of the expansions oh. and stuff or like gameplay. We, we, we could talk primarily forever. rated the Marriageable Bachelors and that was a full episode. So we've got more. <laughs> we should revisit. Um, but yeah, Stardew Valley yeah, is my favorite. Agreed. I think it's your favorite. So much so that we have to actually set it aside and move on to some of our other favorite indie games or else this will just become another Stardew Valley episode. And while I think it deserves it, that's not what we're here for. We've got other things to talk about. So let's do it. Let's keep going. Should we just go one for one and see what the fuck happens here? Yeah. Let's see where the conversation... Let's let's go one for one and see. Uh, I think you should start us off. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to start with one that I've already mentioned on this podcast in um, in previous episodes, but my number one... Oh, no, no, no. You can't what? If we've talked about it before, it's, oh. off, uh, it's off. No, I'm okay, joking. Good, because I was like, damn. Boo, 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 boo. No, that's stupid. I'm just uh, being <laughs> super funny. I was so disappointed for a second there. I was like, oh, I was really excited about it. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, I got you. My number one um, that I'd like to talk about tonight is Firewatch. Okay, I like it. See, this is going to be good because Firewatch is definitely one that I know of and have intended to play and just never have. And why not, Ben? Uh, I don't know. A lot of different reasons. Um, work, life, children. That's, um, yeah, quite those many, are all very good Stardew reasons. Valley, Stardew Valley taking up over 600 hours of my life. Oh, I would, I, I love Firewatch so much so that... Uh, John recently bought it again for me. So this will be my third playthrough of it just on a different console. Hey, way to go. Yeah. So this isn't an open-ended game. This is a, a narrative uh, then. It's yeah. it's a story. You you play through the entire thing. Yeah. And I can do like a real, real quick run through. You basically, um, you play as a gentleman who has a very upsetting um, emotional situation happen with your partner. And you take this job uh, as a fire warden or watch person in a national park. And you basically have a conversation with another person that's on another Firewatch tower. And then you just, you find a bit of a mystery and you walk through it. And it is, it's a haunting game. It's beautiful. Like the sound, the audio work in it, like the voice acting is incredible. Um, Even just like the soundtrack is lovely. And the visuals of it, it's just like, it is a beautiful game. And it's so well done that um, it's even just like a great example of good writing. Like that is how you tell a good story. So I love Firewatch. I think the publisher I'm just looking up right now is Campo Santo is the developer of um, Firewatch. And it would be my number one pick. And it's often what I recommend to people that are looking at games. That's my top dog. It's your top dog, huh? So how did you feel about this game when you're playing it? That like 
has elicited this from you? Is it, it was it about the fun gameplay? Did you get sucked in? Was it like you you left your your world for a while and became one with this game? It is an emotional sucker punch. Like in the first like five minutes of the story, I was like, oh my god, because the emotional like the connection to the character is so strong immediately. Really, and what makes that happen? Um, I'm curious to know if it's manipulative, like. Is it like, oh, this guy's dog died and then he lost his yes. shoes and his children don't love him anymore? So it's, it's sort a of manipulative. little manipulative. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but I am curious to know how they got you into that that quickly. I'm going to give a bit of a spoiler just in the initial story of it. So if you don't want to hear, is there a special sound for spoilers? Not yet, but Jeff can do anything. <laughs> she can't do anything. Spoilers. That's your warning. The main character's partner is diagnosed with early onset dementia. And she tells him that she wants him to go live a good life and kind of like doesn't want him to care for her because she knows that it's going to be like a life drain. And I've had members of my family have dementia and it is, it's a difficult disease. And so immediately I was like, oh God. So that part I would say is manipulative, but I think in a good way. But then the rest of the story, I was just sucked right in because it was... Like it was just, it was haunting. I don't know how else to describe it. Atmospheric music yeah. and uh, images and colors all work together to just transport you to another place. I think we're going to see a lot of that with uh, yeah. the games we talk about. I think that's very likely a, a, a consistent universal thing here. Yeah. What about you? What's your What's your first pick? Well, it would be Stardew Valley, but as we've noted now, mm-hmm. we're not allowed to. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. I love you, Stardew. I'm sorry. I have to move on. But just can we just mention real quickly how great the uh, soundtrack is for Stardew Valley? The the sounds. Love the, have we yeah. talked about this before? Probably I think we've too talked many to, times. We've talked about it multiple times, like in life outside of the show, and I think on the show we've for sure talked about it at least once. Well, just shout out to that beautiful soundtrack to yeah. the the music that Eric Barone made, and just like so fantastic. It's part of my like daily existence. Um, you have the vinyl, don't you? No, no, I never bought the vinyl. Oh, my record player broke and I'm old and now I just put things on on a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> I don't hear the great audio of the clicks and pops of a physical media, but I also don't give a fuck, so. <laughs> I can listen to music on my on my cell phone, just like turn the volume way up and that's something a lot oh, yeah. of people find offensive. Oh no, I do that all the time, like when I'm baking. Anyway, okay, so yeah, Stardew yeah, Valley, but... incredible soundtrack. So my number one, I think, is is uh, is No Man's Sky, um, oh. and I think I have a thing for open ended games where the gameplay is sort of not defined necessarily for you, where it's more about a sense of place or an experience. And and No Man's Sky is one of those games. It was one I was very excited for, and then when it came out, there was a lot of backlash against it because there were some features talked about that didn't necessarily make it into the original cut of the game. Um, that said, Hello Games, the company that published it, and uh, I forget the name of the the gentleman who sort of runs that that small independent group, but um, they've just spent years continuing to bulk this game out, to add things into it, to make it a more interesting and more robust experience. But even from that initial get-go, it was a game that was, um, I say this not derogatorily, but like boring, but in like a really beautiful way, sort of a calming game. You just sort of start exploring these weird barren mostly barren planets there's like flora and fauna and stuff but like you're alone and and you're alone in the universe and you just start hopping planets and discovering things and uh yeah it's, it, it holds a really special place uh in my heart as sort of the a game where you can just leave leave earth leave all all the stuff going on here and and go experience some something else, something more interesting, something beyond ourselves in a in a sort of never ending universe that you can just keep discovering. So it's it's uh, that's probably my top pick um, after Stardew for indie games. I love it. I know it's a bit divisive to some people, although at this point, it's for people that enjoy it and the people that have played it. It's not divisive anymore. It's pretty much universally. Mm-hmm appreciated and all the hard work has been appreciated so it's cool it's a it's it's really cool too that 
they've just continued to develop that and uh, I, I don't know if there's been one or two like sort of major upgrades that you've had to pay for or if it's all been free I think it's all been free actually same as mm. Stardew um, but just that that commitment to that game is something that you get from an indie uh, developer that you wouldn't get from you know your your Blizzard Activisions or your EAs yeah. they just they don't fuck with that they don't it's not about that for them so well it's a true labor of love for people, yeah, yeah, making right? that game that you wanted to make and, and making sure it's the version you wanted to have out there. So that's really cool. I've really appreciated that game. Yeah. What do you got next? Um, so this one, I I have long, long loved this game since I first played it. Um, I guess it came out in 2019 and it's called Jenny LeClue, and it was published and developed by um Mography, I think is how you say it. And it's actually the only reason I came across this game is because a couple illustrators and folks that I follow on Twitter and Instagram were raving about the visuals and like the character and concept art and just for sharing some of the lighting. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this game has some of the most beautiful lighting I have ever seen in a video game. Like when people talk about the lighting of video games, of storybook, like it never really made sense to me until I played this game because it has the most gorgeous shadows and warm lights and oh my god it's just um i think for me i'm a big sucker for beautiful visuals story is great i love it gameplay is almost like third or fourth on my list if it's pretty to look at i'm there for it and so i think it is an incredible game just to look at even if you don't love the story i would still recommend getting the game just to look through everything because it's like reading a picture book but then the writing of it, like, it's just, it's whimsical, it's funny, it is well thought out, and it kind of follows a lot of really great story tropes of the mystery genre. And so the story is of a young person whose parent is, I guess, like, she would be a, like a criminologist or something, and she teaches at this university, and she fancies herself a detective, and there's a bit of um, a crime that happens at the university, and she has to solve it. And it's a two-parter. And so when the first half of the game ends, I was like crushed. I was like, what the hell happened? I need to know what's going to happen next. And they're currently in the process of working on part two. And I cannot wait for it to come out. It's an excellent game. Storyline is great. Another good example of beautiful voice acting. And one that I think you can play in a couple different ways. And based on your decisions, it's one of those kind of like decision tree type games where you're going to have different outcomes and experiences based on your, the decisions that you you make in the game, which is great. Um, I just, yeah, I love it. Big stars for Jenny LeClue. Yeah, but uh, you've talked about it before and I've actually looked at it and been like, I want to try to play this because Lexi thinks it, of it so highly. Um, it's This is no shade on the game or the developers. I don't like the art. You don't like the art? It's wild. <gasps> What? No, uh, I like the lighting. Uh, like looking at screenshots of it, like when you're like looking at it in like the different like game stores and stuff. But like the the figures just don't do anything for me. They they remind me of like early two thousands flash art and just that sort of like yes that weird sort of I don't know how to describe it. Just like hinged flash video game mechanical stuff. Yeah, it's like they're like puppets. Almost. That really bothers me. It throws me off. It's interesting <laughs> because the same thing that can bring you into a game and make you love it is uh, it's a double-edged sword because it's it's that's very true for me. No Man's Sky, that space exploration, beautiful, yeah. vivid, like often acidic colors and like atmospheric. But like, yeah, um, yeah, the the figures here, that art is also something that throws me here where I just can't can't f with it uh, because. <laughs> I don't like looking at the figures. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> looking at them bothers me. And so I don't know if I'll ever get around to playing it, which is a shame. That makes me feel like a, a loser. No. But uh, hey, we went to art school. We can't help ourselves. But that's what I like about indie games is like there's something out there for everybody. And if it's not your jam, it's not your jam. But yeah. It's so interesting because we were just talking about Pokemon and like mm -hmm. you were mentioning uh, that something that was holding you back from playing like uh legends pokemon legends Ar arceus was that uh you know lots of lots of uh hate on the graphics looking like yeah like two three generations ago etc cetera, etc cetera. and i was just like i don't care about the graphics um and if anything i actually sort of liked them once i started playing the game like the colors were good um like the like it felt appropriate for the game 
and it looked like the anime. Uh, so like, yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm fine with it. Like, I don't need super rendering or anything like that. But and now here I am saying the opposite being like the figures bother me so much that I can't play a game. But it's funny that um, you bring that up because I, I told John um, about like what we talked about and how you liked it. And then we watched Donkey's review of it. And the fact that Donkey... I don't know what Donkey is. Please explain. <laughs> Donkey is an online video game. Like he's a YouTube personality who is known for very like in your face, unapologetic, maybe not so popular or you could also say like super popular responses to things. Anyway, um, we were watching one of his videos, like his review of um, the latest Pokemon game. And he is notoriously not a fan of Pokemon. And he was like, I love this game. It was super fun. And so John just was like, I'm buying it for you. And so I started playing it last night. And what did you think of uh, the art? Did it throw you? Did you have like convulsions and vomit when you looked at the <laughs> were the polygons too terrible <laughs> i didn't have a fit or a stroke it isn't the best yeah it's but i will say so far i'm loving it i think it's a great game it's lots of fun i do find the graphics lazy uh yeah but i think it's a, still a good game i mean yeah it's hard to argue with that i think they've definitely like polished them up to be see this is the thing you can get around certain um limitations of the graphic style you're using or the engine you're using or the time limit you have by doing certain yeah. things like making sure your game has a unified style uh you know the same thing that you can do in art which is like make up for certain parts that you're lacking by unifying and, and doing a good job of other things so arceus has like a great color palette it chooses a style and sticks to it and does it consistently so it's not does it, it doesn't look ununified yeah it chooses that sort of uh like overexposed washed out super sort of look to it okay and, uh, i see what you're I don't saying think they stray from it really at all yeah they have like sort of a unified look they've chosen a style and stuck to it more or less but they, there's still tons of shit to dislike like the animations in battle are still janky and like lazy like you said and i think that's all sort of a result of like the game a year or two games a year that game yeah Freak is is uh obligated to put out and i don't know yeah this was a arceus was a good like mm -hmm a good stepping stone, like a good like proof of concept for being like, Hey, could we do our formula a little differently in a yeah. way that's more engaging and, and, and really faster paced and Holy shit. We've got way off in the game. Now we're talking about, <laughs> we're like, not talking about game freak. Okay. Next one. Okay. Wait, 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 quick question though. It does, does a game freak Pokemon game count as a triple a title or not? Are you? It's gotta be right. Yes. It's an $80 game. Yeah. It counts as triple a. <laughs> Even though we all know that it's not going to deliver AAA, it's going to deliver like one and a half. <laughs> if that, yes. Yeah, but Pokemon lovers love those games regardless. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, yeah, that was just my aside was like certain times the art can really throw me. Um, and Jenny LeClue is one, but I'm going to try to push through it at some point and play it anyhow. Get Fiona to play it. I'll ask her. She might, She she's she's particular with art on games as well. Uh, she has a tough, oh, and then she also has her exceptions where she went hard on all the uh, the Elder Scrolls games and played all the old ones. And even though they were like you know pre N sixty four level polygons at some point <laughs> with those early ones. Um, all right, let's move on because we want to get through our top three okay. here in the first half of the show. Uh, my next one, I think, is Hollow Knight. Oh, okay. I had a tough time choosing like. What am I going for here? Like, did I finish the game or did the game do something for me or make me feel a way? Or is it about like time played? Because there's definitely games that I put more overall time. Yeah. In. Oh, totally. But Hollow Knight was that sort of cool combination of like a soundtrack for me, which is a huge deal. Like I need that atmosphere. I need to feel like a, an interesting sense of place to a game. Um, so Hollow Knight, you are this, uh, I guess, bug. Um, creature that's trying to figure out what's happened to the bug kingdom that they used to be a part of and uh, it's sort of a, a bit of a mystery that unfolds as you explore through ru ruins and it's a bit of a metroidvania in that it's like you need to get x to proceed to the next area and then in that area you'll get the next thing which lets you open up the next area after that and you can sort of move around the map trying to find the right item you need next in order to get the item after that um so yeah, it's it's uh it's beautiful, great gameplay, haunting, interesting characters. I think that art is is beautiful, even though it's sort of simplistic and stylized in its own way. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I really like the atmosphere of that game, the unique world being sort of that bug, that sort of bug kingdom thing. And uh, yeah, it's very evocative. 
I have never played it, but I know several people who are, I would say, obsessed with it. Like, any given point of, like, if they have any free time, they're playing Hollow Knight. Yeah, I go back to it uh, very frequently. So what kept you from playing it? I'm curious. Um, um, I'm not a big side-scroller person. Like side-scrolling in general, or just the Metroidvania type of side-scroller with the, like, action? Yeah, the Metroidvania, yeah, I, I struggle with it. Like, I really tried to get into Ori, like, the whole Ori kind of franchise, because mm-hmm. I loved that art. Like, that to me, again, like, I just thought... I, I love that kind of whimsical fairy tale. I tried to get into it too, and it was actually just sort of a little bit boring for me. I was getting so frustrated with it, and I just like, I, I can't get, I get bored with side scrollers really easily because I like to putter around, as you have heard from me, like pulling up dead sticks in the middle of armed standoffs, apparently. I just like to explore and like, well, what's behind that tree? So yeah, I just, because it's too much like you are on a set path and you have to do it quickly and blah, 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 like, nah. Uh-oh. My wedding ring fell off my finger somehow. I don't hope that's not a bad omen. <laughs> no. It's just chewing on my finger and somehow my ring fell off. It went flat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What does it mean? Actually, if we're reading like a Chatelaine magazine, there'd be a, a quiz we could take about that. How many times has your ring fallen off? And what does it mean about your relationship? Oh, God. Do you want me to go get my uh, tarot cards? I could do a quick reading for you to tell you what it means. Yeah, we should. We should actually just do an episode about tarot cards where we just do readings. I, I, I would love that. I would. I got a new set of tarot cards. What do you need for a reading? Could we do readings for our, our listeners and just like they can just send us an email or a DM and uh, as long as we have their names, we can do a reading? Technically, you're supposed to have the person. Well, you need the person to hold the deck. Right. Okay. So. Because they have to cut the deck and before you. Well, it's all bullshit. So we could just do it anyhow. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, we've run into a confrontation. I'll have to consult my crystals on this before I give you an answer. I don't know. They're gonna say no. I can tell already. I think you're predisposed to not being happy with what I just said. <laughs> We can do that. One thing about uh, Hollow Knight that was interesting to me was I actually get, like, I know about pretty fast on those types of, like, fighting games when they get a little bit too technically uh, heavy in their requirements, like needing to really re- memorize bosses and stuff. And something about that game kept me there, even though it was very difficult for me. That's not my, like, my type of game usually. Usually I go, I go in more for, like, the do your own thing, do whatever you want, just experience this place sort of game. And so that was surprising to me as well, that I just kept trying on something like that when normally I would have quit ages ago. Yeah. And that just reminded me that I have to add a game to the list that I forgot about that was maybe would have actually knocked Hollow Knight down if I'd remembered it sooner. Is it Cuphead? No, it's not. I've never played Cuphead. Is that your next No, one? that was the single most frustrating game I've ever played in my life. And I was just like, F this noise. I like- knew Cuphead wasn't for me like before I even... And I don't really... I know a lot of people are nostalgic for that type of like, I don't know, what would you call it? Flesher art or whatever. Yeah, like that Betty Boop style. Yeah, that early cartoons of North America or whatever. And I, just, I, I don't find that charming or appealing personally. I find it grotesque. Yeah, I find it grotesque too. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Finally. Like there's something so unsettling about it. <laughs> we can finally say, it. hey, Cuphead, I, I appreciate what you are. I appreciate what you've done. That yeah. art is disgusting to me. I There's don't something like so unholy about it. Like every time I see it, I'm just like, like, I don't know why it bothers me so much. Yeah. God, I got like, my dad would bring home like weird VHSs that he'd pick up at a store when we were younger. And like, we'd get like these weird ass old racist cartoons that he didn't know what the fuck was on them. He'd just pick them up because they were a dollar at like Zeller's. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it'd be like Gabby and like Heckle and Jekyll and shit. And like, Aside from the content, the animation was just off-putting yeah. to me. It always has been. Not my not my style. So I didn't ever fuck with Cuphead because I just didn't like the aesthetics of it. Yeah. We tried it once and I was just like, I could not want to play this last. Like, it's just, it was not for me. Mm-hmm. I don't like games that are hard for the sake of being hard. Yeah. And people love that shit. And that's just not for yeah, me. Which people, is why oh, yeah. Fortnite is weird to me too, because like I got into that and that is sort of that technical type of game where you need to know your timing and know your moves etc yeah not usually my shit um sorry anyhow so that was it hollow knight uh what's your next one what are we on number three for you your top three this is number three yeah and so i really struggled with this one because of my list of like 13 games here Mm -hmm. because again i was looking at is it my love for it or is it hours put in and so i had a hard time picking between 
a couple. It's so hard to Oh pick. my gosh. But I'm going to go with overall everything. Um, so I'm picking the Banner Saga as my number three. Oh, good choice. So Stoic Studios. Completely forgot about that altogether. Uh, okay, wait. So that's a studio, but is it a very small studio? So it counts as, as indie or what? Um, I think so, because it's not something that's super well known. It's not... Like, it's not getting picked up on multi-platforms. Like, you really only have a few ways to pay, play it. Is it? Well, it's, it's on everything. Is it on iOS? No. It's iOS. It's oh Switch. God. You can get it in the PlayStation. Okay, so then I'm just... Oh, yeah. I played the Banner Saga on my phone. I'm saying. But I I thought it was... I thought Banner Saga was more indie. No, that doesn't make it not indie. Yeah. Um... I mean, Stardew is indie, obviously, like Pinnacle of Indie, and it's on every platform. That doesn't mean uh, Cuphead's indie. So let's see, Stoic Studio. Well, okay, so here, I'm just looking at Stoic Studios. It's not like a big AAA, like, you know, ea size studio, like, like, there's no way it's that. It's a small team. It feels that way. It was founded by three ex-Bioware employees. So it has a big... Oh, really? Edmonton Zone. Yeah, like, it, it was. A, it's a big, big company feel for a small developer so you could maybe argue it either way i would say so it's basically for people who don't know uh sort of a tactical rpg yeah um just this beautiful oh, story and yes. art um inspired by ivan durrell who is one of my personal favorites i'm actually surprised i forgot all about banner saga when making my list until now so glad we're doing this because it's up there for me too oh. um and it is that sense of like place and atmosphere and transporting you. Well, it's like the true epic. Like it is a journey. Yeah. Like if you're talking about Hero with a Thousand Faces, like that's the epic storytelling in video game format with like really rich characters. Like the art is just... I, I'm... It really sucks you in. Oh, that yeah. That world too, like the sort of uh, the mystery of that world. Like why is it falling apart? What are all these people? Like what's happening? Um, well, and, and, entropy. And you read um, the one, the book that I wanted to start writing, which was basically fan fiction inspired by Banner Saga, that whole Viking world. And oh, yeah, I just, oh, everything about Banner Saga is it's a great story. The characters are really interesting. You want to learn more about the lore and you want to continue to follow the characters. You, you do want to know about that so much uh and it's uh that's a game that is kind of difficult and uh i think i actually i ended up stopping at some point in in one of the games and not finishing because it was i was stuck in a fight that i wanted to do properly and not lose characters and i couldn't figure out how to do it well and that's i was getting emotionally invested because you'll, you'll make a decision like yeah i will take these like three random refugees into my caravan and then like 12 days later they kill everybody and i was like gee i have to start over I love that shit. I love those decisions that you make in a game that like affect the rest of the game for you. Oh, I'm a sucker for that shit. I love it. I want I want my decisions in a game to really fuck shit up for me. Well, and then I start else. getting obsessive and like wanting to it's, write what I do down. So then I'm like journaling to track my decisions so that when I play the game again, I can make a different decision. Like it just it turned the only other time that I have gone detailed note taking in video games is creating spreadsheets for um, Animal Crossing and then creating spreadsheets and charts for the Moogle network in Final Fantasy Mognet in in Final Fantasy (laughs) 9. Because I remember I had a friend over and she was sitting on my couch and she pulled out a piece of paper that was underneath and it had all my notes on it. And she didn't play video games. And I was scared of people knowing that I played video games as a teenage girl. And she was like, what the hell is this? And I was just like, oh, I like don't even know. I knew exactly what it was. I ben. will be amused with that story while also feeling <laughs> sad that you felt uh, the need to hide your, yeah. your gamer dorkiness. But we're past that now. Yeah, I embrace it now. Uh, yeah, no, Banner Saga can't recommend it any any more highly Enough, it's, right? it's such a yeah. lovely game it's um gorgeous. like seriously that art alone if you don't know ivan Durrell, you need to go uh look them up they did the art for uh like the development art for sleeping beauty and uh, a lot of other mm-hmm. things too you will recognize it it's it's beautiful it always reminded me of the last unicorn 
I am not familiar enough with The Last Unicorn um, to comment. You need to familiarize yourself with I, it. I have been told that by many, many people. Uh, and they are all, uh, generally speaking, women. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a coming of age thing for all like women of a certain... So, well, from for a millennial too, like not a lot of media was particularly specifically designed for for women and or girls, and so that's so interesting that that seems like it might have been. But like it was, I I found it. It was like a dark kind of violent fantasy for women, whereas everything else at that time that was geared towards women was very like poppy and na na na. And this was kind There's of nothing like nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you just yeah, yeah. choice. That, and that's just like, that's just not my jam. And so I never felt like I belonged in any one thing. So when that came out, I was like, this is me. You're going to rectify this? The same way I feel about like Dark Crystal. Yeah, I, w- I will watch The Last Unicorn very soon. I'm sure Fiona would like that. And uh, we can we can mm-hmm. do a future episode on it. Uh, we should move yes. along. This, yes. this next one's hard for me. I am actually not sure which game I'm going to say even now, because I'm looking at two or three games that all have different significance for me uh, for different reasons. Um, so it's really hard to choose, but I think I'm going with Night in the Woods. That's my third. Ooh, um, excellent choice. Yep. And gets all that stuff that I said that I really enjoy about games, which is atmosphere, music, um, sense of place, and just like, yep. and, and that game's just a little bit spooky, just a little bit creepy. There's just something eerie yes. going on while also exploring sort of this idea of like the death of, of middle class, middle America, uh, the loss of, of home and, and, and town and friendship and it's just a beautiful melancholic and also a little bit scary game in this just beautiful yep. setting of like a midwest town that's slowly decaying uh but it's canadian what's canadian the game in what isn't what it way? like it it's developed by Canadians. Uh, I think there may be a Canadian on it, but it is very uh-huh. specifically, from what I recall, about the Midwest, like Pittsburgh, like uh, mining town. That kind of like mining, yeah, yeah. that's falling down. I mean, we have some of that here, but not as much as not to the same extent, yeah. Yeah, but please do go to the Google and find out for me now. Uh, there might have been one person who was on the group that was Canadian, and unfortunately, he might have been problematic and also uh, might have passed away at this point. Yes. Yeah. The, it is. And I really struggle with that. Do you look past the art when the creator is problematic? And I, like. Sure. Oh, art versus so artist, difficult. separation of them is a huge issue. I mean, yeah, it, it, it can be. I mean,. But it like I think you've pointed this out in the past that it isn't a single per. If it was a person who had some problematic, uh, abusive type tendencies, that's one thing. But this was a whole organization of many people who weren't. They were just like they were the victims or whatever or, you know. Well, in this case, three people. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely there. You, you, if you're partners with somebody in a project like this and they break that trust as well with you, not to the same extent, obviously, as, as people they might have abused or, or harassed. But yeah, it's an it's an interesting topic. I don't know if I'm prepared enough to... Well, we don't know enough about... Thing. But the game, like I will say, the first time I played that game, I wasn't sure what I was getting into. And then I just got sucked deeper know. and deeper. There's right? no way to know. Just yeah. sort of a little bit spooky. A little bit eerie and a little bit sort of that magical realism sort of idea like yeah and also sort of that generational ennui that millennials and gen z's yeah. are facing of sort of like <laughs> the world we were promised doesn't actually exist and watching like our parents become depressed or family members that you think had their shit together become these depressed husks. sure that coming of age realization <laughs> that like oh these are people just doing the motions as well trying yeah. to, trying to make it through also coupled with like yeah the, the the dream isn't there anymore the go get educated and everything yeah. will be okay spend yeah. your money on that and you'll be you'll be fine that doesn't exist that's not real that's fake so it's like this great mix of coming of age with like yeah. the end of naivety of like sort of uh, as well as like the end of that american dream um <laughs> disillusionment as well which you know is sort of coming of age in one way but also like there's definitely people that have 
I, or maybe even at one time, like a certain type of pe- person that could actually believe in that dream and, and think it was real. But I think those days are past and this game hits on it pretty, pr- pretty solidly. But there's all these like moments because it could be a pretty heavy game. But then you have these like one or two moments where you're basically playing like Dance Dance Revolution on the bass guitar. Sure. Yeah, you need that. That levity. Yeah, you can get so into it. Doesn't that seem like the perfect encapsulation of sort of our <laughs> existence at this point? Like, is it all falling apart? So then what do we do while it's falling apart? We try to treat people. Yeah. We try to treat people, right? We And we try to find those moments of like joy and happiness and and maybe try not to get lost in the the swirling abyss that seems to be ahead of us and try to find ways of of putting up some 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 joists to to hold that off a little bit longer i don't uh, know it's it's just such a magical game for that reason yeah sort of. it is and i'll just say that there's one part where you're being chased by a stranger that scared the absolute bejesus out oh, of me oh scared me too i i was like but like in a good way yeah i was like oh so spooky <laughs> Yeah, it was like you're going through the woods and there's just things darting between trees and you're like, oh, okay. It's one of these. It's a little bit weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The characters are so lovable and great and interesting and unique. Um, That's my top three. We should probably go to a break here. Yeah. So that means it's time for Who's Who's That that Pokemon? Pokemon? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're not here to sing Pokemon clips in unison. I think it's your turn. I think you got to come up with them. Or did you do the last one? And I'm willing to I did the last one. To... Yeah, because right. I remember I, I I had Diglett and you were yes. very confused by it. Yes. yes, yes. And then we found that picture of sexy Diglett that I uh, will never forget. Can't unsee that one. Chad Diglett. <laughs> Chiglett. X. Diglett. Ooh. Chadlett? I was trying Chadlet. to do that too, and I couldn't come up with one that made sense. There's All right, no let me uh, let me look around the room here. See what I can come up <laughs> it's with. it's chair. <laughs> it's chair. Da, da, da. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's. Uh, I will give you the silhouette. If you are okay. looking at it directly straight on, um, there is a rectangle. Okay. And it's on top of sort of a smaller rectangle, uh, and then there is another rectangle sort of protruding from the bottom into a fourth rectangle that sort of is the platform of the rest of this object. Is it your computer then, monitor? It is not. That's a good <laughs> guess, though. Uh, and then there's a few sort of round objects at the bottom of the platform. Rectangle, rectangle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this shape for you with my hands and describe what I'm yeah. doing. Uh, I'm putting my hands together in a large square. Yeah, rectangle. And then that's the top rectangle. And yeah. then I'm squishing it down into a much smaller rectangle uh, that's very long. And that's the next rectangle that comes under the first big one. And then I'm rotating my fingers into a long, skinny rectangle that comes out of the bottom of the second rectangle. And then flipping it back again into a long, skinny rectangle at the bottom of the... Oh, Jesus, the other long, skinny rectangle. The vertical rectangle. Now it's another yeah. horizontal one. And under that, there's some round objects. What the hell? Are you sure it's a Pokemon and not like an object? No. I mean, that's the entire premise of this is that it's either or. <laughs> it's one, it's, yeah, it's oh, a Pokemon. It's a Pokemon. This would be Hence a the bloody name. easy thing. I will draw this Yeah, could you, you please uh, draw it? <laughs> you will get it immediately when I draw it for you. I think you're giving me a lot of credit there. I don't know that that's going to happen. You went to the same art school I did. We can do this. We are champions of Pictionary, etc. That's a, it's an art degree coming in there for you, folks. We can play Who Is That Pokemon on a Friday night. Here you go. I'm holding it up. There's the silhouette. Oh. That's exactly what I was picturing in my head, but that just looks like an some type of like medical equipment to me. I'm going to give you one more hint and see if it helps. <laughs> okay. Can you make it sound for me? uh squeak squeak here's your final hint that's what i was like is it a chair did you just describe a chair to me (laughs) yeah it's a fucking chair oh my god chair (laughs) (laughs) this has been our best uh, our best ever who's that pokemon oh it literally was the chair chair. i ran with it (laughs) Yeah, that's, you know what, I, I like to be a yes and person. I was like, which Pokemon is that? It looks like a chair. Uh, you just wait. Next generation, there's going to be Cheromon. Yeah. TM, you got, no like, that's a that. trademark right there, Game Freak. TM, TM from Dorkomon. <laughs> Dorkomon. 
It's so Ben Dottoman because you're the stay at home dad that has like a some type of apron with like a baby in it, like Genghis Khan. It's got babies tied around me and like a bandolier. Yes. This has been Who's That Pokemon? <laughs> do do do. That's it. <laughs> okay, we're we're back. Welcome back to Dork Matters. Um, yeah, we finished talking about our sort of top three indie games. Do you want to just rapid fire some other ones yeah. that we we love? Or, or yeah, I can just throw out like some... boom, boom, boom. These are the rest. Like the the honorable mentions nearly made the list. Really, really tough call. Yeah, go for it. What do you got? We'll do one for one. We'll do it really quick, less than a minute each. Okay, Cook Serve Delicious was going to be my number three based on hours spent. It is, it's just like, it's a button masher. Like you basically, you play like a line cook. It is addicting AF. Sounds stressful. It's super stressful. Have you ever been a line cook? No. And I think that's why. I, I don't think a line it. cook would ever play it. <laughs> it sounds fun to me, but I imagine there's a lot of people out there. That'd be like, oh yeah. I, I do that all day. I, John has watched me play it and has so many times just been like, I don't get it. And that is fair. But uh, yeah, cook, serve, delicious would be my... Uh, you know, honorable mention. Four. My, my four. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, this is one that didn't make my top three, but is everybody else's like favorite game of last year. It's Hades. Oh, I never got into Hades. You didn't like it, huh? Yeah. Oh, it won like every game of the year last year. I know. I looked into it because it was so popular, but I was just like, not for me. I got into it. Uh, it was fun. It's it's takes a lot of effort uh, to... I think for me personally to get good at it, but uh, yeah, I like the story. I like all the sexy hell characters from sort of Greek mythology. Um, I definitely ship uh, the main character. What's his name? I can't even remember his name. Zagreus or whatever. And, uh, and death. Mm -hmm. um, those two go together for sure. Yeah. It's great. Lots of fun. Um, some fun weapons and yeah, you just, uh, I've never beaten Hades at the end. I've gotten to him a couple of times, so I've never actually completed a run through. But for me, even getting there seemed like a, a real win. So that's that's another honorable mention. You got any more? Um, oh, yeah, I got tons. I got a short hike, which a short hike. I know I was just ragging on Game Freak for, <laughs> for shitty graphics and a short hike. I wouldn't say has the best graphics out there, but I love that game. I thought it was super fun. And uh, yeah. I loved it. I've not heard of it. What's it about? You go on a short hike? You go on a short hike. You are a little bird person and you basically have to get from point A to point B. But cool. um, yeah, it's just it, like it's a lovely little game and highly recommend. Cool, cool, cool. Um, another one for me is Castle Crashers. Um, it's uh, like a four player sort of arcade style side scroller like TMNT or like uh, X-Men gotcha. that you find it like the the wave pool when you were younger. Um, but it's done with just sort of this unique art style by, the, I think the studio is called behemoth or something. I forget. Mm. Uh, I love that game. I put in many, many hours. Uh, my old roommate, Brandon, who, you know, yep. um, we used to play, sit on the couch and play that game together. And it was always a blast, a real bunch of fun smashing and leveling up and getting new weapons and stuff. So it's a great game. Yeah. Really cool. Hmm. Love it. Um, my next one, um, unpacking, I, it is only been out in the past few I've months. I've heard of this one. Oh, I love it. I, I loved it. I loved it. So you, it was... Much like the go for a hike game you just talked about, you unpack? Yeah, you just unpack boxes, but it was such an interesting take on telling um, a little bit of a life story because it's like you unpack a room in a family home and then when this person goes to university, their dorm room, and like think of every house or home that you ever lived in Oh, and, you're following the story, but yeah. yeah, the idea of like moving as somebody who has moved a lot in their lives, I can appreciate that. I might actually check that. It one was, out. and I got to say for sound, one of the greatest games for sound, like if you take a cup and put it down on a surface, it makes a different sound based on the surface it's on. So if it's a metal stove, that's really, cool. oh, it's like you could play for hours just listening to the sounds, but it was such a simple game, but I've probably played it through 10 times. It was great. Loved it. Uh, is it on iOS or where do you get it? Uh, not on, not, it's on switch. Um, it's on a uh, computer. Like we played it on PC. Yeah. I'll just go to the app. Store. I don't See think it's, it's on there. iOS, but I could be wrong. Packing. It, if it's not yet, I probably will be, be in the near future. Uh, it's not. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I've got Terraria. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or played it. 
I have heard of it. It's been recommended to me several times, but I've not had a chance it's to It's sort it of, I guess, Minecraft in a way, like you dig into the earth, you collect different ores, you build houses and craft materials and weapons, and you at night face like weird hordes coming towards you to attack you. And as you dig, dig deeper into the earth, you find other things and other monsters and stuff. Ooh. But it's a, it's a really sort of open-ended explorer game. Sometimes you find towns and stuff like that, and there are bosses and stuff to fight when you find them. And uh, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. I've put a lot of hours into that. There isn't so much uh, story, but it is just sort of a fun mechanic. Um, Really enjoyable. There you go. That's another suggestion. That sounds good. I'm going to piggyback real quick because I've got one called Starbound that's Terraria, but in space. So the little bit of difference there is you can actually fly to different planets and experience different places, but a very, very similar game um, in my experience, but also very fun. So... Just want to put those two together. Love it. Uh, my next one is going to be Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, I'm glad somebody said it. I've uh, never played it, but it was worth bringing up. Oh, I loved it. It was so much fun. And it's now that they kind of, they did an update where it's a two player. It is a lot of fun to play as two geese just walking around and like causing chaos. I love that game. It was super, super cute. Um, and kind of an, like... Things are difficult these days, so to be able to play a game where, like, you're supposed to upset the gardener by honking and stealing his, like, his boot, goodbye me. It was a very popular game. It, it was uh, a huge, huge thing there for a bit when it came out. And, yep. uh, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to give it a shot at some point. I like the idea of being a goose, and I bet my toddler would like watching that. Oh, yeah, for sure he would. Uh, my next one is a recent release, Eastward. Um, this was yes, a little bit hard to describe. Call. It's in some ways sort of a, uh, like, what's it called? Mother or whatever, Earthbound game. Yeah. Sort of, but, like, beautiful animation, beautiful cutscenes, just beautifully oh, designed and, like, and drawn game. And character designs are so interesting. And the game itself is sort of weird. You start underground, and then turns out maybe you don't all have to live underground after all. And... The mechanics are interesting. Great story. You control a couple yeah. characters that uh, the gameplay is like completely different when you switch between the characters and there's a puzzle solving aspect of like switching back and forth between them. And it's a very unique, very beautiful game um, and a really cool story. I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, I loved it. And I'm really glad you brought that up because I totally blanked on that one. And I would say I love the music in that one as well. Oh, the music in that is great. It's like, it's something that indie games seem to get way more yeah. right than like your big budget games um big budget games often have scores that people enjoy but i don't know why but i feel like it's it's so much more memorable when it's an indie game for some reason maybe it's because it's one person doing the whole well, thing or something it's all or, like it's so much ingratiate like in their brain whereas maybe on the bigger teams it's more of like a collaboration right. versus like a person who's compartmented with it. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's like hey we need you to do this as opposed to the person who's like designing small team that's like this is what you need to evoke yeah with that. this is who you need to be yeah uh, it's really cool what do you got next um so this one i've never played the game but i look at the concept art constantly so this is a uh, disco elysium and i've never played it john's oh, played it play and john said yeah, it's great. i've been recommended by many people well, I like it. I everything I've seen about it looks great, but I I cannot get over the concept art and the character design for it. Like I have a whole Pinterest board just of the scratches and doodles and comics and everything that go with the game. So I'm going to throw that out there just because I think it looks beautiful. And John said it, it is an exceptional game. No, I'm I, I'm going to be playing it when I when I finally get a <clears throat> a chance to. I have a friend who's a professional uh game writer and uh they have recommended that game to me and uh apparently just like every choice that you make as far as talking to people affects what happens next like there is no inconsequential like dialogue options that you can choose in that game and uh everything you say or do like affects how everyone else reacts to you and and what's open to you to do next and Mm -hmm. i love that kind of like affectable world uh in a game love it cool uh, my next one is an early game that uh, got me, which was Bastion. Oh. Um, it's this game where you play this like little character with a sword and you wake up on like a floating island in the world. Something's happened to it. And so you're sort of going around, piecing things back together while sort of doing like your, I don't know, Zelda style, like early Zelda sort of style gameplay, but like sort of isometric and just 
smash and stuff and it's another one with like a soundtrack that's just so so great uh that you uh can't help but love the entire game oh sounds lovely um okay so my next one is a game i actually just finished maybe like last week it's called chicory and i was slow to start on it but then it was a game that if you are are working in the arts as an illustrator, a painter, whatever, anything in the visual arts, and you have ever felt bad about yourself, this game speaks to you on some emotional levels. Like I had some feelings with this game because it started, like it gets into um, um, like self-esteem and emotional like artist block and feeling like you're not good enough to create art. Like it just, it seems like such a, like an easy surface level game. But the emotions that I went through playing that game, I was not expecting. <laughs> That's so interesting. I've actually seen this one a couple of times in, in Instagram ads, no less. And I'm like, this looks interesting to me. But then uh, something kept me from playing it. And I think it was that it looked maybe a little bit like derivative of something else, but maybe it's not. And I just sort of mis- misinterpreted what I was seeing. It's It took me a while to kind of like a lot of people suggested it to me. And I was just like, man, it looks kind of little kitty or whatever but i finally like it was on sale or something and i got it on um switch how could you do that how could you say it's a little kitty I, when you come from the art i know world? but that's what my first response was like i thought it was for like a children's game Be- because what's popular with kids right now is like coloring crap in on um, apps sure. but like, i just it's 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 an excellent excellent game and i highly recommend it yeah i think i'm putting that on my to try yeah. list i would cool. i would love to talk to you about it after you play it Sure, we'll do a revisit. We'll, yeah. we'll do more episodes on the indie games that we love. Um, my next one is Braid. It is a uh, a classic of the indie genre that kind of exploded in the early two thousands. It's that one that sort of it's sort of the side scroller in, in in a Mario sort of style, but it's like you the mechanic that's unique is you can sort of control time to accomplish your goal in the level and then it's sort of telling a story about if I remember it all correctly, sort of. Um, the invention of uh, the atomic bomb Mm. and sort of the emotions involved with the people that did that uh, loosely. Yeah, it's a very interesting game, atmospheric, again, cool Mm -hmm. art, great music, and just unique gameplay and and just sort of weird. It's that sort of thing where you don't really know what you're playing about or what the story you're playing about is. And Mm -hmm. so you sort of get peaked and keep going. Um, But yeah, classic. Um, I'm going to throw this one out there. It's going to come a little bit out of left field, perhaps. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Not Prawn. Do you remember that? Not Prawn is not something I know about. No. <gasps> okay. So Not Prawn, I don't know when it came out, like 2003, let's say. And it is an online puzzle game. And you basically, like, you can find spoilers now, but at the time there was no way to do it. You basically go to a website and you have to solve a puzzle with very little help and support and i would say it was the first time it would take that kind of like scavenger hunt genre and move it online like that whole scavenger hunt slash lock or locked room kind of thing and using the internet as your platform if i can if that makes sense yeah it sounds vaguely familiar now i don't think i ever played it but it sounds interesting yeah i would say that that was maybe my first like look into alternative video games maybe because i never even thought of it as a video game more of a website but i would say that that was kind of a yeah fascinating i like it i like the idea of it i'm so curious now um that's all i've got for for my sort of like list of games and other ones i wanted to mention okay i have two left and they're from john that i'll do because mine is from my partner as well fiona which is called uh return of the oberdeen which is this game that sort of oh yes that's a great one. A mystery game where you have to like solve sort of something that's going on. And it's also got this really unique yes. sort of like pixel art style that's happening. And it's very mysterious. And you're sort of like walking around scenes that are like frozen, trying to like find clues and, and solve this. And she was uh, very taken by that game and just like raves about it constantly. Um, and from what I've seen about it and read mm-hmm. about it, it sounds like it's a very unique game and very, very cool uh, and just sort of does some mechanics and gameplay that is unique and, and new and different. I watched John play a little bit of it and it was, yeah, really, really interesting. And 
I've never seen anything like that. Also being maybe a little bit scary. It was it was kind of spooky. All right, what do you got next? Um, the last two, and these are kind of shout outs to John. Uh, the first one would be Papers, Please. Have you heard of that one? No, I haven't. You hit me with a lot I haven't heard. Papers, Please is another one of those like weirdly emotional, not expecting to get invested in. You basically, it's like a, it's a pixelated, super low effort graphic wise game, but you basically play a border guard looking at people's passports as they pass through into like a Soviet era esque type country. Uh, and you have to make a judgment on who's telling the truth and who isn't. And at some point, are you uh, confronted with sort of what you're doing and the choices you're making? Oh yeah. Ah. So you got to start making some ethical calls. Oh, I'm playing a game. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not playing a game. I'm, I like it. I like that kind of switchy, switchy tricksy stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. It's yeah. So definitely that's a great one. And then I would say one of the games that John absolutely adores, loves, continues to play and come back to constantly is Kerbal Space Program. Literally never heard of this. Wow. You- oh my God, Ooh, Ben. So many that I've never heard of. Kerbal Space Program is basically rocket science. You are building a rocket from scratch. Well, that's why I haven't heard of it. I don't know if fucking rocket science jesus it is like it it is a wild game and people out there who know are probably like yeah kerbal space program it is i've i tried to get into it but it is an addictive science game where you're basically doing like astrophysics for you know the do it yourselfer um but when john was working in a school he had like a whole club and kids were getting super into it he continues to play it. Kerbal Space Program 2 is coming out pretty soon. Um, if you haven't heard of it and you're interested in the mechanics of flight, it is an excellent kind of builder game. This might be the first one you talked about where I can definitively say I'm not going to play it. <laughs> That's fair. Something for cool. everybody. Some yeah. things for nobody. <laughs> um, I know there's a whole bunch of other like really notable games that we didn't talk about. Um, we are not always that interested in talking about shit that we don't have a personal connection to what fun would that be if we're just saying shit um you know there's celeste there's fez there's shovel knight undertale all of those super meat boy um yeah we talked about some of that stuff but just yeah there's just the sort of indie game it's not necessarily a genre as it is sort of a development situation but like there's just so much there. Uh, so yeah. if you have found yourself not getting away from, uh, you know, AAA games, your, your you know, kill zones and your, uh, I don't know, Madden footballs and stuff, you know, take a, take a step into the into the smaller side of things and uh, give some of these a try. Yeah. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to chat about before we move off of this episode and, and call it a day. Um, most anticipated indie games. Mm. I know we have a daily double here, but uh, did you have any of these prepared or can you think of any off the top of your head? Mineco's Night Market. Oh yeah. You were telling me about that uh, in one of our previous uh, I'm so excited for that game. Yeah. I'm, that's my one. I don't really have one in Calgary. So uh, yeah. Like Night Market. We, we have a Night Market. Yeah, do we? We have one that Meg Van Rosendahl started. Anyway. Who that is? Yes. What's, what's the, what's the daily double? Haunted Chocolatier. From our boy. Cons- <gasps> ding, ding, ding. Oh. Like, dropped a tra- trailer a little while back, uh, some music, and so uh, that community yeah. has already exploded. Uh, just a whole bunch of people that, like us, have probably spent the last five, six years playing Stardew Valley. Uh, we're ready. We're ready for Haunted Chocolate here. Who knows how long we'll be waiting. So um, excited for it. I already know it's it's going to take up a chunk of my game playing time when it when it arrives. I might take time off work. Oh, yeah. damn. I wish I could do that. Maybe the kids will be in school. By the time, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't know. And then my other one is uh, a game from uh, Stardew's sort of initial publisher, Chucklefish, which is called uh, Witchbrook, which is supposed to be sort of a, a kind of like almost sort of a like a magic sort of Stardew is how I've, I've read it described. Oh. It's not necessarily like farming sim sort of stuff like that, but it's a it's a a similar vein, go to go to witch school, learn spells, craft spells, that sort of thing. And it's got a very cool looking art style. Um, there's no ETA on release yet for that, but uh, I've been waiting for it for a long time. So I'm excited to try that one when it shows up. 
You got any more? No, I'm just super, super excited for Mineco. And uh, yeah, Haunted Chocolatier. That's going to be amazing. Like, you know what, folks? Dark days out there, but we got some great video games on the books. So keep your head up. Yeah, yeah. Find the stuff happy uh find your little slice of 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 cheer or you know escapism there's nothing wrong with that yeah do what you got to do to stay uh stay stay frosty stay gold pony boy stay, stay gold happy. pony boy i like that one yeah yeah his reference um you know do what you got to do to 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 have a nice experience and and enjoy yourself and treat other people kindly treat other people with respect be considerate play some video games yeah and uh yeah you know if we miss some shit that you think we should know about please do send us a message or an email um everyone at uh dorkmatterspodcast.com for those emails we're also interested in hearing if you've got any ideas of uh, what you want to hear us talk about or dork out about um we're always up to talk about things even if we don't know we'll answer questions that you might have or make shit up if we have to um, but yeah, let us know what kind of indie games you're enjoying, you've enjoyed, uh, maybe that we missed or ones that you're looking forward to. I'd love to hear about it. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk about them in a future Dork Matters. Dork, 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 dork. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Dork Matters. If you like the podcast, subscribe, give a rating and tell a friend about us. If you are a fellow dork and have a dork issue that you think we need to discuss, tell us on our social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out our original art and other content from Ben and myself. We'd like to say a big thank you to Yabra for the use of our theme song Dance off of their Astral EP, as well as a thank you to Jess Schmidt for producing and editing our podcast. Thanks, Jess. Dork Matters. This podcast is created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Nations, which includes the Siksiga, the Bigani, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Stony Nakoda Nation, Sutena, and Métis Region 3. Dork Matters is a proud member of the Alberta Public Radio Podcast Network. <laughs> <laughs>